Well, good afternoon and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now we're just going to have a look at uh, the Cymbidium today, see how they're going on. I mean, you can see these are going over now, that's just got one flower left and uh, another one here, look, ready for dropping off. And these are going over now, they're all changing colour and they're getting some funny marks on them. So I'm going to chop them all off, these, and uh, we're going to have a look at uh, how the others are going in the other greenhouse. I think I'll bring them in here and uh, we'll have a look at them, see how they're growing because they've been in that uh, other greenhouse with no heat on all winter. So uh, we'll just see how they're going on. Right, so we'll, do, we'll take the stakes out. And they're stuck in. Chop that off. A few secateurs. There we are. That's one off. Now we'll do the other one. I mean, they've been very nice these, and I've really enjoyed them. So. Uh, I'm sorry to see them go, but they'll come up again next year. Right, we'll just get rid of these. And the thing to do now is clean up all the rubbish that's in the pot. You know, the, not decaying leaves, but just little leaves that have fallen in and stuff like that. Those cutting off. Leaf here dying off, so we'll move that one. And another one here. They're a bit tough. There we are, that's that one off. And I forgot to show you when I was removing some of the flowers, inside one of the flowers was a nice little snail. She's got a labelling. Unusual. Cymbidium Glowianum Desert Peach. Oh well. That sounds nice. I'm not going to repot them because they're nice and sturdy in the pots. You know, I can get all the things and just lift them up, they'll not come out. And the new growth on this one, well it's lovely, we'll just have a quick look at it. Oh, I just forgot there were two flowering spikes on this one and I've only cut one spike off. So I'm going to chop this one off now. There we are, that's that one gone. Now there's not much to clean up on this one. Just one or two uh, things to clean up here. I think that uh, this part of the flower is done, so I might chop that off. But we've got the new growth here, look. Really lovely. Another mark on the leaves, which I like. Another new growth there. You know, no brown tips on, no nothing. They're absolutely gorgeous, these plants. So uh, we better look after them this year what's going to happen to them. I'm going to find a nice shaded spot in the garden and put them out for the, uh, put them out probably end of April right through to uh, September, something like that. And these are uh, five, well they're annoyed cymbidiums because I haven't got a label on any of them, but I know one of them and I don't know which one it is until it flowers, if it ever does. It's one of those uh, sort of a chocolate coloured bloom, but it hasn't flowered now for about, uh, oh it's got to be four or five years, because I haven't been looking after them, but uh, since last year I've started looking after them, I've got two blooms on the ones you've seen, and uh, I've got plenty of growth on these now, so, and um, actually I planted a back bulb 
and that's doing very well too I'll just show you well this is the one where I just planted the back bulb and uh, since last year we've got this growth on it another nice new growth so that looks like it's going to make a nice uh, cymbidium plant very pleased with that from a back bulb This is another cymbidium that was looking a little bit crappy, uh, the leaves going over, not very nice. Uh, look at these, holes in them, marked underneath. But this has shot up a new growth as well, so we can find it properly. Yep, there it is. And that's coming up with some beautiful unmarked leaves. So I think what I'll do, I'll chop off all the uh, the bad stuff here and uh, and here, and just leave that to uh, to get the goodness from the two uh, suitables that are left. Well, I've chopped those off now, and uh, I've, uh, where I've cut it, I've put some cinnamon on because I'm getting a bit short of uh, dragon's blood. But you must admit that makes a much nicer looking plant than the leaves all over the place and all marked. So uh, that's another one that will come on well this year when I have it outside. Here's another one which uh, needs that suitable cleaning up. The leaves are going bad on that one. Uh, they're just going over on that one as you can see but I'll leave that one. And there's a new growth there. Absolutely perfect. And another one here. It's looking lovely and clean. And don't forget, these plants have been in minus centigrade degrees uh, over winter for a long period of time. But it doesn't seem to affect them at all. So, uh, I mean, the others were flowered. They were in. They got down to minus eight centigrade. Uh, they still flowered. The, uh, the following year so uh, I don't know I'm still learning about these and experimenting I don't much, know much about cymbidiums uh, I've had these donkeys years I tried to just leave them and hope they'd die off but they never did so I thought well it's coming to a time and I started last year that uh, I'd better start looking after them so and since I've done that they're, uh, they're coming on well I mean they really take up too much room for me uh, look, the, the new growth don't go straight up, they come out at angles and they go that way and they go that way as well so uh, you know, they really take up too much room for me well this is another one I've just cleaned up and it's got nice growth again there so uh, and I found another two snails in it well this is the last cymbidium I'm going to show you because it's getting a bit boring and uh, this is quite nice with two uh, two nice new growths on it there and uh, he reminds me of an old lady who used to come to me and she said could you have a look at me uh, cymbidiums for me and this is going back years and I knew nothing about them and she said she kept it on the windowsill it was one of the uh, the smaller varieties and, uh, well, when I tried to uh, repot it for her to get the saw and I had to saw the pot and everything, I couldn't get it out. I said, how long have you had this? Oh, she said, a long, long time. I said, and how often do you water it? Oh, she said, I give it a bit of water every week. I said, um, how, well, I'll, you know, what do you feed it on? Oh, she says, I've never fed it since I've had it. I just give it a bit of tap water. She says, and it flowers every year. You know, I wish I'd have happened to all the orchids. Well, this one is the last of my cymbidiums, uh, but it's got some too nice growths on it there. And uh, you can't say much about these because, uh, you know, there's not much to say about them until they're in, uh, in bloom, when they're absolutely lovely. But uh, when they're not in bloom, they're sort of an ungainly plant. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't need to do much with them. And uh, they'll survive in fact. If you want to get rid of them, you'll have a job on. I think you'd have to put them on a bonfire 
to get rid of uh, cymbidiums because, uh, as I said before, I've tried to get rid of these many, many times. Uh, no, I've taken them to the auctions, nobody wants them. And uh, I don't know, I don't think they want them because uh, they get far too big and people haven't got the room. Well, we haven't got the weather up here, actually, to, uh, to keep them outside. And uh, so yesterday, it was a beautiful sunny day, and uh, today it's raining, it's windy, and it's cold. So uh, that's the problem we've got, trying to keep Sibidiums in the northwest of England. I think the only place you can keep them properly is if you have a nice conservatory. You know, nice big space, nice and airy, uh, doesn't get below freezing, and uh, you know, they should grow quite nicely in there. But unfortunately, I haven't got to, I haven't got a place like that. I've only got the greenhouse and I've got to accommodate a lot of plants. Especially now that I've uh, I split those three up. Well, I'll just show you the plants I've got now. One nice plants there that I got from the uh, uh, Sologene glandulosa. Two there, two at the back. Can't see the pots, but I'm sure they're there. And uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of the uh, Dendrocarlum glumasium. There we are. And finally, all these of the uh, Chilinostelli sulfuria. Well, the heater's just come back on it, just showing how cool it's got to get in here because I turned the heat off uh, while I was filming. The only thing I've got in the greenhouse now are two blooms, both Phragmopediums. Uh, and that's all I've got. Very few spikes. I've got a spike on the uh, Adopted Glossum here that's uh, swelling up nicely. A bit slow, but uh, it'll look nice when it opens up, hopefully. Well, what I've been trying to do is get everything organised, everything in its place. Everything's got a label on it now, so I know what it is. And uh, just sorting things out, moving things around. Uh, come summer, the uh, small paffier pedals won't need that much light. So I'll put them over here. There they are over there. So the thing I've got to do now is organise where I'm going to put these things. The Cymbidiums, the uh, uh, Angraecum vecchii, the Angraecum sesquipedale and the Renantherus. But I'll sort that out later. Anyhow, sorry, I can't uh, tell you any more. Uh, I've got nothing else to show you in this greenhouse. Maybe there'll be something uh, indoors. So I hope there's something to show you in next door, anyhow. So, until then, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.